this afternoon's occasion. Please refrain from standing up and approaching the altar to take pictures, especially during the solemn rite of ordination to the diaconate. Thank you for your cooperation. Good afternoon, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, family and friends of the ordinance and esteemed guests. On this great solemnity of the resurrection, the Society of St. Paul, Philippines, Macau Province, welcomes you to this afternoon's liturgy, where we shall witness the reception of our brothers into the sacred order of deacons. The following Paulines will be ordained to the diaconate, Cleric Albert O. Garol and Cleric Eric Mark S. Salamat. As deacons, they will bring God's word to believer and unbeliever alike, to preside over public prayer, to baptize, to assist at marriages and bless them, to give viaticum to the dying, and to lead the rites of burial. Once they are consecrated by the laying on of hands that comes to us from the apostles and is bound more closely to the altar, they will perform works of charity in the name of the bishop or the pastor. From the way they go about these duties, may we recognize them as disciples of Jesus who came to serve, not to be served. Our ordaining prelate is Excellency Most Reverend Milo Hubert Vergara, Bishop of Pasig. He will be assisted by the Reverend Father Raymond Ferraris of the Society of St. Paul, Director for Formation, and the very Reverend Father Jose Arripio, the Provincial Superior of the Paulines in the Philippines and Macau. Please stand and let us join in the singing of the entrance hymn.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is truly risen. Happy Easter to all of you. On this day, the Lord Jesus wins over sin and death, ushers in a new day, and begins a new creation. Let us celebrate the Lord's resurrection, the cornerstone of our Christian faith, by uniting ourselves to Christ, dying to our sinful selves and raising with Him to new life. Let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The resurrection of Jesus is at the heart of the earliest Christian kerygma, that is, the public announcement of God's salvation through the victory of Jesus over death. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name the word of the lord thanks be to god
Paul speaks of how God chose his holy ones in Christ before the foundation of the world. The apostle pictures for us how God prepared Mary for her role as mother of the Savior. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread, sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Christians, to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb, the sheep, redeems. Christ, who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life, who died, reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw wavering. The tomb of Christ, who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection, bright angels attesting. The shroud and napkin resting, yes, Christ, my hope, is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen. Our new life obtaining, have mercy, victor, king, are ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They, ran, they both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent belt cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please. 
please be seated. The Reverend Father Raymond Ferraris, Director for Formation, will present the candidates to the ordaining bishop. And the very Reverend Father Jose Avipio, Provincial Superior of the Philippines, Macau Province of the Society of St. Paul, will testify to the worthiness of the candidates for ordination. Let those to be ordained deacons come forward. Cleric Albert Garong. Present. Cleric Eric Mark Salamat. Present. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church ask you to ordain these men to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those concerned, with their formation, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these brothers for the order of the diaconate. Thanks be to God. As a sign of our approval for the ordination of these men, let us give them a round of applause. siguro itong ordination na ito no kung maayos ang papeles no hindi ko po na check maigi bahala na po father jo no but because first it is easter sunday of course a blessed day for all of us christians and second because it is done within this year of the clergy and consecrated persons later on believe me Albert and Eric, these events provide memories to make you grateful to the Lord who has chosen you to serve Him and the church we love. Allow me to use three images called from our readings today that will hopefully motivate you to use three parts of your body as ordained ministers of God your lips, your hands, and your feet. Your lips. Our first two readings obviously tell us how Jesus blessed his apostles to use their lips to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. In our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter used his lips to speak about the life of Jesus. He spoke in summary form what took place in the life of Jesus from the time of John the Baptist to preach about him to the time of his public ministry to moments of his paschal mystery even up to the time he commissioned him and other apostles to testify and preach on what they saw and heard. In our second reading, Paul used his lips to tell the Corinthians to proclaim their faith in the Paschal Lamb. Albert and Eric, today you will receive the gift of holy lips, the gift to kiss the book of the Gospels, the gift to preach like what Saints Peter and Paul and the other apostles received. Use your lips to proclaim Jesus and not yourself. Use your lips to preach 
the good news well. Huwag kayong tumulad sa ibang diakono, pari at ilan pong mga obispo, maaring katulad ko, na pag nagkukomili eh, hirap nang makatake off, hirap pa rin makalanding. Use your lips to substantially preach on God's Word. Not to entertain with jokes and songs, but use them to touch hearts and prick consciences that will lead them to hopefully experience what Paul experienced on the road to Damascus when he fell to the ground and realized 